Okay, let's do the numbers on the axon. First you'll need fuselage tubes, two of them, like this. And this is the nominal two inch fuselage tube, which is determined by the interval of paper on the inside of the tube is two inches. If you'll see my video on that, that'll be pretty obvious. The actual interior diameter is two and a quarter inches or six centimeters, and the outside diameter is two and five eighths inches or 67 millimeters. It's 30 inches long, which is the length of one piece of Dollar Tree foam board, and you'll need to make two of those. The first one goes to making the main fuselage tube here, and then the second will be used to make the nose section of the fuselage, the upper fuselage section, and a spare piece here. And so you'll have like this, one, two, three. Now the one that you cut will be six inches along the top, with the exception of if your wing cord is greater than five or six inches, I'll come back to that, and the length of the lower part is about 12 inches as well. Each of the three sections should be cut in that same manner. The leading edges of each of these can be finished by whatever technique you like. You can iron on the hot glue there, you can do the wraparound technique, or I've just gone with a quick version and just put some duct tape on there. Packing tape would work well too. I have placed the parts together using two-sided duct tape. Uh, Scotch two-sided foam tape would work fine too. Anything of your choice, even hot glue. And then I've simply wrapped two strips of duct tape all the way around both sections, covering the seam between the main fuselage section and the nose fuselage section to keep that strong. And it's uh, it's pretty sturdy. The tail, you can sweep like this. I actually recommend to do that to save a little bit of weight. So for this step to create the nose and the upper fuselage or power pod, I've taken an ordinary 30 inch section of tubular fuselage, two inch inside diameter, and I've marked it at six inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, and 24 inches. So divide this in six inch segments, five of them. And then I have traced up from this corner up to the six inch mark, cut this down all the way across, all the way around. In this section, back down, across, and back up the other side, and that will create a piece of scrap here, a nose here, a spare nose here, and then the upper fuselage power pod there. And so the cuts, as you can see, go around like this. And this cut goes straight all the way around, and then this cut is the mirror image of the one at the other end. I've chosen to make the, the thicker part where the doubler is, the joiner, to be the bottom of the fuselage and the top of the upper fuselage because that's where the motor is going to mount and so this by being doubled is going to be a little bit stronger. So you may choose to cut your inclined lines in, in such a way that you end up with two pieces with the uh, doubler at the bottom if you want a spare nose and one piece with the doubler at the top which would be this one for the power pod upper fuselage. So then out of the one 30 inch fuselage piece, you'll end up with three individual pieces that are identical, except that two of them will have the doubler at the bottom, and then the other one will have the doubler at the top. So this will be a nose, a spare nose in the middle, and then the upper fuselage power pod there. And so it goes together like this with the nose, the upper fuselage and power pod, and then the main fuselage down here. This is the part that if you crash that and smush it up, then you've got a spare one right there. And so here I've got the nose, the upper fuselage, and the main fuselage, and I'm just going to attach these each to one another with uh, two-sided duct tape, although hot glue would work great here, between here and here. And then I'm going to just use ordinary white duct tape just to cover this seam and hold everything together. Okay, here those are assembled, nose, upper fuselage, main fuselage, and I've got my motor and speed controller here. Of course I'm going to cover that up. So how this is going to go is speed control inside here and then the motor I'm just going to stick 
right there. And depending on your prop clearance, if you're using a metal motor mount as I am, you could put it inside the upper fuselage or you could put it on the outside and get a little bit more clearance. Now here's the upper fuselage inside here and I've glued a plastic gift card under there very securely to the underside of this doubled foam board and then I'm going to use this motor metal motor mount and stick it right up to that in the center line. I've used a 2200 kV motor about the 200 to 250 watt range a 6x4 prop that allows about a half an inch clearance with a 5 degree down thrust angle which is important. I've used a metal motor mount here but as there are obviously many many possibilities I would just ensure whatever solution you choose is to ensure that you get that prop clearance and then make this as strong as possible and that this not in any way interfere with the uh, mounting and security of the wing. Now there is one variation to consider when making the main fuselage tube here. I've made the default one 30 inches long, flat in the front, and angled in the back with the presumption that you will either use weight in the nose, some FPV gear like a camera and a transmitter weighing about an ounce or two, and or some landing gear in the front to counterbalance the weight of the actual main fuselage. If in fact you just want a very simple version of this with no extra weight up front, you may consider taking the main fuselage tube and cutting out yet one more spare nose section like this and angling it here, setting that aside, and then what that would have the effect of doing is taking the tail and displacing it six inches forward. The advantage is you won't need quite as much weight in the front. The disadvantage is that you'll have a little bit less control authority with the tail surface as the tail moment arm is decreased. But given the considerations of your build, um, choose to make either the 30 inch section or the 24 inch main fuselage section here. But there's still another option in order to keep your center of gravity where you want it on your wing and that is to simply move the upper fuselage section rearward on the main fuselage section just as long as there's enough overlap of the upper fuselage section with the nose to allow you to tape and secure that on uh, adequately. And so if you've chosen to do the full length version that I have here, that's a 30 inch fuselage section plus a 12 inch nose section will yield a 42 inch total length or if you choose to do the short version your total fuselage length will be 36 inches which incidentally is the length of many of the planes such as the Hawk Sky, the Bixler, and the Easy Star. For a battery mount for my 2200 milliamp hour LiPo batteries I've used a plastic gift card like this cut lengthwise with two pieces of foam tape double sided holding down the uh, velcro strap right here and it's easily accessible in this area and of course you've fed your uh, speed controller line to that location as well and then on the upper fuselage section here I've placed my receiver with easy access to the servo wires uh, to disconnect and connect the ailerons if you choose to disassemble the wing but this would also be a pretty good place to put things such as an FPV camera and transmitter and just place it right there. Now this area for the wing mounting has two hold downs which are chopsticks in this case you can use any sort of strong peg like material that passes beneath the upper surface here with a little bit of glue to hold it in place and these should be placed about the same distance apart as the cord of your wing and we are assuming we're using a five inch cord arm and wing in this case in which case the pegs tie downs are five inches apart allowing at least half an inch forward and rear of those hold downs. If you're using a wing with a larger cord in the center section, you may want to modify this section so it's in fact a little bit longer and your wing hold downs are correspondingly farther apart to match the uh, cord of the center section of your wing. So here I've got everything mounted. The motor with a, about a five degree down thrust angle here. I've got the wing pegs installed. These are actually chopsticks, which you can get from Dollar Tree that I just sawed off the end right there. And put about three quarters of an inch forward of the rear and the same from the front. And this should equal about the cord of your wing where the wing is going to join the fuselage like that. 
One important consideration with these wing mounting pegs, whether you use chopsticks or dowel or carbon fiber, is that as they go through the side of your fuselage, ensure that the force is borne by the upper part of the fuselage, not that it goes straight through the side and is wanting to tear up through the foam board. Rather, this hole shouldn't really bear any force. All of the force should be up against the inside of the top of the fuselage. Now for my wing, I've used a five inch uh, nominal cord uh, arm and wing, so the airfoil itself is, is five inches. And this particular wing has only one inch control surfaces. I would use one inch as a minimum, one and a half inch is a little bit more effective. These are joined with duct tape over the center, nothing fancy. And I've used a carbon arrow shaft as my spar, which lies inside the wing approximately this position. A dowel would work as well. And it's simply taped all the way around with the servo wires for the corresponding servos, left and right ailerons exiting that and labeled so I can easily hook them up when I reassemble the airplane. I used a 55 inch wingspan for this particular model which was a leftover wing that I cut two and a half inches off either end and I found this to be a good mix between speed and glide ratio. You could use a 60 inch wingspan or 40 inch or anywhere in between whatever your needs are for the particular airplane. The horizontal stabilizer is 15 inches wingspan, the root cord is 6 inches and the tip cord is 3 inches. It's equipped with a one and a half inch uh, movable control surface, the elevator, which seems to give very ample control authority, particularly since the elevator and the rudder are within the direct uh, prop wash, so it gives very affirmative control. I finished the leading edges with duct tape, which was a little bit of a cop out, um, but I would make tend to err on the side of making this a little stronger than the average model, just because this is right in the prop wash. The rudder is seven inches tall with a equivalent root cord of six inches. Of course, it's got a little notch cut out here for the elevator excursion to occur. And the tip cord is three inches. So all in all, I found this to be a very easy plane to make and even easier to fly. It had great flight characteristics. It was uh, simple to take off and land. And if you build uh, fuselage tubes, the arm and wing in two sections and the modular tail from the videos that I've made, this should be a piece of cake to put together. So I hope you'll give it a try.